Apples are just beginning to come in in the mountains of Appalachia. The mountains of Appalachia, especially western North Carolina where I live, are really known for growing apples. They do very well here. In fact, they do so well that they really play a huge role in the Appalachian foodways. You'll hear many families, many people say, especially in, when they were young in those days, the apples were served for pretty much every meal. Every meal of the day had some sort of apple component. Because of that, and because they were so common, people in Appalachia, kind of, especially in days gone by, no, not so much today, they just called apples fruit. They just referred to it as fruit, as if they were the only fruit almost. Now, I don't use that that word usage, I should. I should try to make myself use it and, and continue and hold on to it a little bit longer. But Granny and Pat both used it. Uh, Granny might say, you know, you ought to come down. Years ago, of course, before Pat passed away, she might say, you ought to come down and eat dinner with us. I've made biscuits and opened a jar of fruit and your daddy's made some fried taters. Of course, that was a meal that I could never, never resist going and eating. That was a true feast. But that's how common apples, what a huge role it plays in the foodways of Appalachia, that it just become known as fruit, just fruit. So when apples began to come in, then you got to start thinking about how to put them up. And there's just a variety of ways that people, different people do it different ways. And people, a lot of people like me, do it several different ways. Of course, there's wonderful applesauce. Applesauce goes so well with so many things. You could use it in desserts as far as putting it on cakes. You could also just use it as a side dish. There's apple butter. That's lots of people's favorite. And I really love apple butter too. Apple butter and peanut butter on a sandwich is really, really good together. There's all kinds of like apple jellies, uh, apple preserves. And today I'm gonna share my favorite apple preserve. So people ask me what's the difference in like jam and jelly and preserves. Jelly is just, you just make it from the juice. So I have a video where Corey and I were drying apples back in the summer a few weeks ago, or I guess a month or two ago now, and we used the peelings to make jelly. So we just extracted the juice and then we made jelly. So if you make jams, it, jam has like pieces. It would have been if we had kind of mashed up the apple pieces and left them in there. And preserves is kind of like a, not the entire apple, but more whole con pieces that have not been um, mashed up or smooshed kind of like for jam. So Matt and I have several apple trees. We had two apple trees that were that we've had for I don't know, a long time, really good producers. Like two years ago, I guess it was, one of them, when it comes springtime, spring of the year, we were noticing it was dead. And Matt went over to it and just with one push, it just fell over. It had died, I don't, I'm not sure what happened to it. The other one is still, still good and still growing, except this year it had no apples on it, not one apple. We had a really late uh, hard freeze Really though, that was before the apples bloomed. So I'm not sure if it was if it got bit, if the blooms got bit, or if it just it seems like it just never bloomed out. If I'm remembering right. Anyway, last year or the year before, when that tree did die on us, we planted three more apple trees. So those are small. This year they had like one or two apples on them, but hopefully in the future they'll have more apples. Lucky for me, a farmer just down the road. Uh, who's also a dear family friend, he has lots of apple trees, lots of peach trees, and he sells his fruit. So I'm able to purchase fruit from him, purchase apples. So that's what his apples are just beginning to come in. And that's what Corey's back here with me. That's what we're working on today. And Corey's working on some that we're gonna dry. And then we may do something with the peelings, whether we make more jelly or I've never made vinegar. So we're thinking about maybe trying our hand at vinegar, but we'll let you know what we, what we decide to do on that. But what I'm doing right here in front of me yesterday evening, I went ahead and I sliced up the apples for what I'm gonna make, which is those wonderful preserves. And they come, the recipe comes from, this is uh, Mount, Mountain Cooking, Mountain Cooking by John Paris. And uh, I've had, in the front of the book, it's got lots of his articles about food. And then in the back of the book, it's got recipes. Really great book if you can find it. It's out of print, so it's hard to find. But when I first noticed this recipe, I was drawn to it because almost exactly the same recipe is one that Granny has been passed down in Granny's family that just uses pears instead of apples. So I'm positive that you can use pears instead of apples in the recipe I'm gonna to share today. But I also think peaches would work just fine too. So I think it's a real versatile recipe and it is a really old recipe. So first he says it's canned sweet apples. 
Peel and slice enough sweet apples to fill a large dish pan. So you have to have a large dish, dish pan. That's a lot, kind of the thing with old recipes. They don't give you exact measurements. Now what I used, I will tell you, was about half a bushel of apples, about half a bushel of apples. So you cover that with eight to 10 cups of sugar and let it set overnight. I divided mine into two big bowls that I have, and then I, I, I went with, um, I think I went with in the middle. I've used the 10 cups, it's really, really sweet, and I've used the eight cups. So this year I went with the nine, so I put nine cups, uh, divided of course between my bowls. But if you were just using one big dish pan, uh, you would put it all over it. And so then, now it's the next morning, I'm going to uncover them and we're going to cook them until tender. Then pack in hot jars and seal. Process 15 minutes in a bowl and water canner. And it says, note, if old time sweet apples are unavailable, use Golden Delicious. In preparing the apples for canning, never add water to them. The juice draws the moisture, or excuse me, the sugar draws the juice from the apples and they cook in their own juice. So that's kind of nice. All you're using is the sugar and the apples. So now I'm going to show you what they look like after sitting overnight. So you can see some of the sugars there, but you can definitely see the juice there when I move them. So we're going to put these over into a, you see that one too, same thing. So we're going to put them in a big pot and cook them just like he directed, and then we're going to put them in our jars. Okay, I've got my big pot. I'll go ahead and turn the heat on and try to start out spooning them in there so I don't make a big mess. I probably will still make a mess, but... Woo! I am making one because I'm slinging sugar water everywhere. That's going to be a problem. I wonder if I can use my little... This might be easier spoon them in here and then pour them. Much better. Now pour the juice in. If I hadn't used a slotted spoon, I probably could have got all the juice. I wasn't even paying attention. I just grabbed a spoon. Now I've got to get all that great juice in there. Okay, I got the rest of the juice there. Let that cook. Okay, our apples have been cooking for, uh, I don't know, four minutes, five minutes, something like that. And you can see how they're, how the juice is really coming out. So now we're ready to put them, start putting them in the jars, and then we'll be ready to water bath them. can use a spoon to kind of tap the apples down in. Let's use a little bit more. And if you spill anything on the top like I just did, you can wipe it off. There's our first jar. Mm, it's going to be so good.
Okay, we're at the end. You can see how much juice is left. That's going to be this is going to be my last jar. So the apples had plenty of juice. If for some reason you didn't have plenty, I think you could just add some. Uh, I guess you'd need to add some water and sugar, but I don't think you'd have an issue. I never have anyway when I've used this recipe because that sugar brings out the natural juices in the apples. But what I will do with that leftover juice is I will go ahead and put it in a jar and can it too. And then I will use that for... Oh, I don't know. You could put it over. You could put it over biscuits or bread or something like that. But you could also put it over pound cake. That would be really good. Ice cream. Any of those things would be great. Actually, I might have enough for one more jar. I won't have many apples on it, but we'll have that wonderful juice. That one, may, my apples may float around in it, but that's okay. They'll still taste good. And this one, they will for sure. in that one. So that one you can see the um, apples for sure or will float around in there but that will still be good. Be great over some biscuits mm, or pound cake or something like that. With what's left in the pan, I think I'm just going to put in a little jelly jar, and I may use it even tonight for supper. First, I'm going to pour it in my little container here first. Let it cool before I put it up. So we ended up with 10 jars. If I had packed the apples tighter, I probably could have done it in less, but I wanted to make sure that I used all that juice. Now I have to think of something for supper. Might make a pound cake or something to put this over for supper. Or biscuits, I could have biscuits and I think I've got some pork chops, that might be good. Anyway, now we're gonna put the jars out in the water bath canner and let them process for 15 minutes. So Corey had my water out here. It's just starting to come to a boil. We're going to go ahead and put our put our jars in. May have to add a little bit more water. Maybe we'll be good. No, we're good. Okay, now we're going to let it process for 15 minutes and they'll be ready. Okay, we got our jars out of the water bath and they're cooling and they turned out so pretty. Look at this, if you can see the, see the apples in there? Oh, it's so pretty. As they sit on the shelf, after they seal, I'll, I'll put them downstairs with the rest of my stuff, they will kind of get more syrupy and thick. Uh, they're kind of runny right now because they're still really hot. So what do I like to use these for? They're wonderful over biscuits, you know, a piece of light bread. Uh, even you could use them as a side dish to a meal, like for breakfast, because we love fried apples. These are really good to eat like that, just as a side dish. Probably my favorite thing to do with them, though, is to make fried pies. Whether it's fried pies or baked pies, baked hand pies, this is my favorite filling to use because it's thick, and those apples are so sweet, and it's just so wonderful. It's just perfect to open a jar um, and make fried pies with. And I have a video about fried pies and unbaked fried pies. You can watch that video to learn the story behind that if you've not. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how to make. These are my favorite uh, apple preserves. He actually calls them canned sweet apples. Canned sweet apples is the name of the recipe from John Paris. But again, it's one of those old recipes 
uh, like I was saying uh, at the beginning of the video, my gr mother, Granny, she has a recipe for pear preserves. It's been handed down in her family for generations, and it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. So you may know it by a different name, and I think peaches would be especially, especially good like this, too. I hope that you enjoyed this video though, and as always, I hope that you'll drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of putting up food for the winter, but also those wonderful recipes that have been handed down through families like the pear preserves, or in this case from John Paris, who was a wonderful writer from North Carolina, the canned sweet apples.